Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. I'm so excited you're here today. We're going to be talking about the truth about rabies vaccines. And guys, I've talked about rabies vaccines before. I've talked about titer testing before. I've talked about, I've talked about it so many times, honestly, but I feel like this is such an important topic. And my thoughts are based on researching with many different veterinarians and seeing the effects of over-vaccination on not just my pets, but pets that I have worked with as a trainer, um, as, and as a, as a coach. And so I have two different veterinarians that I am going to be pulling information from today and sharing with you specifically about rabies vaccines. And this is not all, you know, I I'm not an anti-vaxxer and the information that I'm bringing you today is certainly not in any way like anti-vaxxer. I'm not at all. I think there is a need for certain vaccinations. And then we need to test to see if we need more instead of just assuming we need more all the time. Um, so let's, let's kind of get into this. First of all, for all of the past, you know, content that I've done on vaccines and rabies vaccines specifically, there are I, I believe there are some <laughs> on the podcast, so you can certainly go back and listen to those. There's plenty on Patreon as well. So if you haven't already joined me on Patreon, I hope you do so. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and you get new content, exclusive content, stuff I don't post anywhere else. We have a, a pretty tight knit community over there. So there's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff, personal stuff. Um, I really hope to see you over there. It's, it's really a win-win because for as little as a dollar a month, you get all of that, all of that content, um, and a little bit like more personal access to me as well as you're helping to keep the podcast going, keep content like this coming out to you and other pet parents like you. So uh, it's, it's, I, I feel like, a, an incredible, incredible value. That was my intent. Um, so let's first go to Dr. Will Falconer. And if you have been following me for any length of time, you know how much I adore Dr. Will Falconer. And this was um, this is from an email he sent out May 29th, 2022, in case you uh, have a backlog of his emails that you want to go through. Um, if you sign up for his newsletter now, you're not going to get any of his backlogs, of course, but you'll get all of his stuff moving forward. And I highly recommend you do. So here's what he's saying. Rabies vaccination works. Okay, here we go. You might think with my concern about over-vaccination as clear cause of chronic disease that I'd be against any and all rabies vac vaccines. Not so. It's all about where you live and how you live, but we'll talk about that at another time. India is considered the country most affected by rabies. It's most often carried by dogs who once rabid bite children who often die of the viral encephalitis before intervention can save them. A group of volunteer vets after a seven year vaccination effort has nearly wiped out canine rabies in a small state in South India called Goa. It's a published example now of what's possible. And it's no small job, this mission, as the majority of dogs in India are free roaming. To read how they used smartphones, nets, vaccination, and public education to achieve the laudable result of less rabid dogs and less human deaths, here's the rest of the story. And he links, so I will put that link in the show notes. Rabies vaccination has a place. But unless you live in places like India or Africa, that life-saving procedure is likely being overused 
to the detriment of your animals. If you want to know more about rabies and how the West differs vastly with this disease, start with Dr. Falconer's free rabies short course. Now I have, I have talked about his rabies short course in the past. I have taken, I've gone through it and I've actually paid for the full course on rabies. I highly recommend it. When I was researching, should I continue to vaccinate my animals, specifically my dog? Uh, because I had, I had pretty much already worked out with my veterinarian at the time that my cats were indoor only. We didn't need to continue to vaccinate them. Uh, but my dog, you know, most plate, well, where I live now requires cats and dogs to have rabies, but where I lived then it was very much dog focused that they required rabies. I was very concerned and I needed more information. So I first took Dr. Falconer's rabies short course. And once I finished that, I felt so empowered with the knowledge, I then purchased the extended course from him. And again, I highly recommend both of them. Um, so it's called, it's called rabies. Knowledge is power is the, the extended course. And it's actually something that he only opens for enrollment, like a couple once or twice a year, I think. So I would highly, highly recommend you checking those out, but that in a nutshell, is also my opinion of rabies vaccine, uh, vaccination for rabies. So yes, in the West where I live and likely where you live, we are, mm -hmm, we are way, way overusing this vaccine and all vaccines, probably most vaccines, especially when it comes to our pets. Now, what, what can we do? What do we do? Let's turn to Dr. Judy Morgan. She's an incredible veterinarian. She is a powerhouse. Let me tell you, this woman is like a tornado all on her own. I, I just, I I'm so enamored with her. She's, she's an incredible human being an incredible veterinarian, um, putting out really good content for free to pet parents like you and me. So let's go over what she sent out in an email about rabies. She, this is actually an older email that I have been saving for just this <laughs> podcast. So she sent this email out almost a year ago. It says last week, which again, it was almost a year ago. We talked extensively about rabies. Rabies is a deadly virus that infects mammals. It can be spread to humans through direct contact with saliva or nervous system tissue from an infected animal. Typically, this means a bite from a rabid animal, but even a rabid animal hissing in your face is a risk for exposure because of that saliva. In North America, some animals that carry rabies include bats, raccoons, skunks, foxes, coyotes, cats, and dogs. Unfortunately, the only way to confirm if an animal has rabies is to euthanize them and then test for rabies virus antigens in the brain tissue. Rabid animals often show neurological signs, but can be overly friendly or overly aggressive. I was exposed early in my veterinary career by a stray kitten, a good Samaritan brought in. The kitten was acting very friendly for my entire exam until it attacked both me and my technician. It turned out to be a confirmed case of rabies, and we had to receive post-exposure prophylaxis. If you or your pet are potentially exposed, contact your local health department to get directions on how to handle the situation. When in doubt, they often recommend prophylaxis since rabies does have a near 100% fatality rate. When it comes to the rabies vaccine for our pets, I am not anti-vaccine. I am against over-vaccination and vaccinating unhealthy animals. I think veterinarians should look at the pet in front of them when it comes to making recommendations. I like to wait until six to 12 months of age to give the rabies vaccination, then use titers to see where we are at. I've seen many pets have protective titers for way longer than three years. Some states do not accept titers or medical exemptions for rabies. And this is something I think needs to be changed. I agree. 
If your pet has to get the rabies vaccine and you cannot do a titer or medical exemption, here are my suggestions. Again, this is Dr. Judy Morgan. One, request a thimerosal free vaccine. Two, get the full three years out of the vaccine. Don't vaccinate any earlier than you have to. Three, make sure the placement is low on the right hind leg. Remember, rabies, right. Monitor this area for any lumps, nodules, or swelling. If a fibrosarcoma were to grow there, you can amputate the limb, which can be life-saving. And number four, always make sure any vaccines are given alone. So don't get any multi-vaccines. Don't think you can stack vaccines in the same day. You get one vaccine at a time that has one, uh, one antigen in it at a time. So we're only, we're not getting like a four in one or a three in one. We are just getting rabies alone. And that is it for that day. Um, for probably at least two weeks, if I remember correctly. Um, so always make sure any vaccines are given alone. And while your pet is healthy, remember if your pet is not healthy and we are talking anything from cancer all the way down to allergies and everything in between your pet is not a candidate for a vaccination. So these are some of the truths about rabies vaccines that I want you to know. It's very important that we, we don't, we're not anti-vaccination, right? And even in today's age, like where we are today, after the past couple of years, it's, it's even hard to say the word vaccine and not get a strike on social media, right? Which is a shame because we should be able to talk about these things uh, and we should be able to provide truths. And all I'm doing is providing you the truth as I know it. Um, And that is based on loads of research that I've done and many, 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 many animals that I have come into contact with. All of the information that I have gathered researching everything that I can, uh, everything that I can find from veterinarians that I trust from sources that I trust and, and giving you that information. That's, that's the point of these solo podcasts like this. Um, I love doing interviews and we will have more interviews coming up. Uh, but the point of these solo episodes is to give you the truth as I know it. And when we talk about vaccines, this is one of the, the, one of the things that first comes up is, oh, but rabies is required. We need to dig a little bit more into this, right? Which is why I brought you two different veterinarians opinions and information. There was some overlap. There was some stuff that one talked about the, the other didn't, and that's okay. We have to put all of this together. It's a, it's a puzzle, right? That we have all of these different pieces and we have to fit them together. Overwhelmingly, don't vaccinate more than you need to and titer test after you vaccinate before you give any more vaccines. Um, one other thing that I would like to add is, is detoxing after a vaccine, especially if you have to give a vaccine in a situation where you, um, have titer tested. And and like, if you're in a state that doesn't accept a medical exemption or a titer test, um, if you have a very unhealthy animal, if you, if your dog is sick, If they are, they don't have a whole lot of time left on this earth. If if your primary concern is quality of life right now, um, do every, like fight, 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 fight for your animal, not to give them more vaccines. They can be very detrimental. So even with healthy animals, that's one of the main things we see in healthy animals is that within that 30 day period after, uh, getting a vaccine that they did not need. Uh, they come down with all kinds of illnesses. One very, very prominent one is itching. So if you have a dog that's itching and like, you've just been through everything and you don't know what's going on, let's look at these vaccines. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the truth as I know it about rabies vaccines. And I hope this podcast was helpful. I hope it was informational. Um, I hope it provided you with a lot of good, good information. I have seen too many animals, both animals that I have owned in the past, 
um, that I have been their guardian and I didn't know better when I was a younger person and animals that I have worked with, um, the, the dog that my husband had when I met him suffered, uh, from a vaccine injury. And I have met so many animals through my work in with, with clients in their homes, meeting animals with vaccine injury, and it takes a toll on them. And it, uh, there are accommodations that have to be made. You know, everybody wants, from my perspective as a dog trainer, everybody wants this perfectly obedient dog. And we have to take everything into consideration, including vaccine injury. Um, so this is, this is why I talk about so much more than just training our dogs is because your, your dog as a whole being is so much more than just what what obedience skills they have and everything about them, everything about their health and their life and their environment affects their behavior. So it's important to look at the whole dog when, when I go into a home and these are the things that I look for. These are the things that I talk to people about when I go in their homes. And so this is my way of being able to provide that same information to you. So I thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. I hope you are giving, you are already following. If you're not currently following the podcast, make sure you are following and subscribe to it. And if you haven't already, please take this opportunity to rate the podcast because when you rate it, hopefully it's a five-star rating, but you know, be honest with your, how you feel when you rate the podcast, it lets whatever app you are listening to your podcast on know that this is, this is something that I should be recommending to other people like you to listen to. And that's how we get this message out to more and more people. I can put the message out there, but I need your help getting it to more people. That's how that works. So, um, also I do hope to see you on Patreon. I know we talked about it earlier. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and the community we have going over there is, is really awesome. I hope to see you. With that, until next week, please give your pets some extra love from me and I'll talk to you then. Bye.